It is entirely possible that I have given myself the worst haircut of all time. But we're not going to dwell on this because hair grows back and hair grows quickly. At least I hope it does. Well, it's about dinner time and I have had a craving for enchiladas. Now enchiladas used to be a big staple in my diet. I would make them several times a week uh, because they are really tasty and they are quick to put together. Uh, but I got out of the habit of making enchiladas because uh, I used to make them uh, using an oven uh, or a broiler and I would start them out on a stove top and then I would uh, finish them off in an oven or a broiler and because I don't have an oven or broiler anymore I stopped making them uh, but thinking about this I don't see why there's a reason why I can't make enchiladas with just my cooktop here so we're going to try to do that I don't know if this is going to be successful but I'm going to try because I really like enchiladas and I want them back into my diet uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I don't really go out to eat very often, so I need to figure this out. But I do think that making enchiladas from scratch is much easier than cutting one's own hair. Our first step is to fry off some tortillas. Now I have some Trader Joe's corn tortillas and Trader Joe's are my favorite tortillas because they don't have any preservatives. Uh, the one problem with not having preservatives is that they do go stale rather quickly. Uh, so one of the ways around working with uh, stale tortillas is to just fry them in some oil. Uh, if you have fresh tortillas, you may be able to skip the step if you are averse to frying off your tortillas. But I think that this is a great step. It uh, makes the tortillas a little bit more pliable and workable. Uh, and it, gives them a little extra flavor too. So uh, it's usually what I do, even if I have some fresh tortillas, I will usually just fry them off quickly. So uh, because these are stale, I don't really have a choice, but I prefer to fry them off anyway. Okay, I'm getting set up here. I'm gonna put some olive oil in a preheated pan. And this is just some regular extra virgin olive oil. This is what I use for everything. Um, it's not everybody's favorite, but it's what I use and I have a uh, plate here with some paper towel set up and ready and then my package of tortillas here and these are these are pretty dry but that's not going to be a problem because the oil will soften them up and also like I mentioned before give them a little bit of flavor and now's the time for me to think about how hungry I am and how many tortillas I want so uh, probably do five tortillas. Um, I'm fairly hungry and so I think five tortillas will be a nice amount uh, for me for dinner. So once I get them fried off I'll just put them in the paper towel and just blot them a little bit and this will just take me a minute or two to quickly fry off these one by one. Okay, so there's the fifth one. I think that's going to be enough for me. Let me turn my pan off because that's all I need for that. And what I'm after here with these tortillas, let me grab one that's not quite so hot, uh, is if you see that, see it's fried and it's nice and pliable now. It's got some strength to it. So normally with a enchilada you'd roll it up. Uh, as, as you're working them. Uh, we're not going to do that this time, but I still want to make these a little bit more pliable just because uh, it'll, uh, well, these are a little bit stale. Uh, I always buy these ahead of time from Trader Joe's, uh, buy more than I really need uh, because I'm very rarely right near a Trader Joe's. So um, just one of the little steps that I do since I would like to have them on hand. Uh, I know that I can just refresh them this way. Now, if I were making tacos or taquitos, I would want to fry these off till they're nice and crisp. But uh, we don't need to do that with these because uh, we're going to actually cook these a second time uh, once we get on with our next step here. Uh, and the next thing we've got to do is to make our enchilada sauce. I'm going to do a little cheat enchilada sauce and I'm also going to build the enchiladas in a slightly different way than maybe you might be used to. Uh, so enchilada sauce 
is usually fairly complex and you need a blender or a food processor or something uh, and some fresh dried chilies but we're going to skip that step just make this easy for ourselves and we're going to use chili powder and i've got two different kinds of chili powder here uh, some new mexico chili powder and also some ancho chili powder and i like to mix the two because i think they're both really great flavors on their own but uh, they're a little bit um, kind of one-dimensional so i just like to mix a couple of different chili powders together and one thing that i didn't know for years is uh, if you ever go and buy chili powder in a grocery store if it says chili powder on the label uh, that means it's a blend of things so it'll have chili powder of course uh, but it'll also have um, garlic and onion and cumin maybe uh, other things added to it uh, so what we're using here with the ancho chili that i have and the new mexico chili is these are just uh, ground up chilies that's all they are so ground up new mexico chilies ground up ancho chilies and that way i think you get a little better flavor obviously chili powder that's a mix of all those things is good um, but it's kind of uh, diluted down with the other things that they mix with it uh, you might like it that way uh, but i prefer since i've found this out i prefer just to buy uh, the ground up chilies and so that that's why i look for just a single ingredient how we're going to build the chili powder is we're going to make a roux basically so i'm just going to take maybe about um, a tablespoon tablespoon and a half of olive oil again i'm using olive oil uh, i know it's not traditional but it's just what i use because it's what i have um, i used to back in the day i used to stock a bunch of different oils uh, for various different things but since i moved into the van uh, olive oil is kind of the one i use the most um, i guess butter would be the thing i use the most but i don't want to use butter for this purpose uh, so I just use the olive oil for everything. Um, again, I'm not being traditional. So we're gonna add to this to make our roux uh, some flour. And here I have this gigantic bag of all-purpose flour. Uh, we're gonna need about equal amounts of flour to uh, the olive oil that we're using. And uh, generally speaking, I think uh, about one tablespoon of flour will thicken up about three cups of liquid. Um, I generally like to go a little bit uh, easy on the flour. I think I kind of overdid it here with this one, but um, normally I like to go a little easy on the flour. Uh, I don't really want my sauce to be really thick. Uh, again, I'm not being traditional here, so I just that's the way I like it. I like my sauce a little bit thinner, uh, but you can do it however you want it. Since I've got all that incorporated, so there's no dry bits of flour in there. It's all nice and mixed with the olive oil. I'll go in with my chili powders and I'm gonna be fairly heavy handed with these. And with this, I can't really give you a figure. Uh, you'll have to kind of just go by uh, look and taste and i like a really good strong chili flavor so i generally go fairly heavy on the chili so let me uh get these in here and then we'll uh look and see what it looks like color wise and this is what i've ended up with and just from experience this is kind of the color that i go for and we can adjust this later on but this is a uh, looks like it's going to be a good first step now i did add some salt into this as well as some of this mexican seasoning and this has some garlic and uh, cumin uh, and onion powder and it also has uh, some dried tomato which i like uh, in my sauce a lot of times i'll put just a little bit of uh, some tomato paste or some tomato uh, into my uh, sauce but uh, since i have this and it's got a little bit of tomato in it this should work and it's got the other ingredients that should be good in it as well so i just added a little bit of that as well and then now we've got to get this on the stove and 
cook this off a little bit. So we don't need to cook this for too long. We just want to cook it for a couple of minutes to get rid of that raw flour flavor. And that won't take very long at all. Uh, once it's cooked through and we've got that flour cooked off and so it's not raw tasting anymore, we'll come in with a little bit of water. Um, now I've got the water on the ready here so that I can dump it in so that I don't burn anything. Uh, now at this step, you really could use some broth. Uh, a lot of people use chicken broth. I don't ever eat chicken, so it's not something I will ever use, but uh, some vegetable broth would work well too. I think this is gonna be tasty, um, mostly because we're mixing the two chili powders, so that's gonna help give a little bit of extra flavor. And also, I think this Mexican seasoning will add a little bit of extra flavor like uh, a vegetable broth would. So that's why I'm gonna skip the vegetable broth, which I would normally do. Okay, so that's just been about three or four minutes and I think it's looking good. So we'll come in with our water. I'm actually gonna turn my stove down a little bit here. This is a 15,000 BTU burner. So I have to be careful not to burn things, which I do constantly if I don't uh, mind the flame, but that's a little bit better there. So I'm gonna come in here just slowly adding a little bit of water at a time uh, so I can hopefully not have any lumps. And we'll just work in this water. And I'll need a little more water than what I have, but uh, this was kind of the only pitcher I had on hand, so this is what I'm using. And this might be easier with a whisk. Uh, it's just too lazy to get my whisk out. So we'll just uh, work it here. This uh, flexible uh, silicone spoon actually works pretty good in getting in. And uh, I think it'll be just as easy as I uh, would have if I use my whisk. Okay, so I just turned the heat off because this has come up to a boil. You can see it's still bubbling a little bit there. Now, this is not super thick. Uh, you can see it's thickened up a little bit, but I don't like a real thick, heavy sauce for enchiladas. Uh, so this is pretty much exactly the consistency that I was aiming for. Now, this will thicken up a little bit as it sits. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And I'm just gonna taste test this. It's good, but I think it needs a little bit of something. So I'm going to come in here with some bouillon. And I have some uh, bouillon cubes that I keep on hand. Uh, this, these are from uh, Edward and Sons. So you can find these at uh, health food stores and natural food stores. So I'll put one of these in here and then we'll uh, taste it again. Oh yeah, that's much better. Uh, definitely needed the salt. And I think that just a little extra kick from the vegetable bouillon cube really makes this, uh, finishes the sauce up uh, much better. It's spicy though. I don't know if you can hear that in my voice. Uh, it is spicy, but that's going to be good. Now we're going to put our enchiladas together. And this is again where I'm going to deviate a bit from tradition. Uh, normally with enchiladas, you would roll them up. Uh, but I'm going to make New Mexico style enchiladas, which is just putting them flat on a plate. Uh, this speeds up uh, the prep time with this quite a bit and cuts down on the mess quite a bit. Uh, this is the way I used to do it years ago uh, when I was making enchiladas several times a week. So I'm gonna do it the same way uh, this time and it's actually gonna help with our final cooking step. So here we go. I'm gonna put down a little bit of our enchilada sauce onto the plate. And then I'm actually gonna take uh, the tortilla, our first tortilla, and I'm just gonna dunk it right in our enchilada sauce. This might be better with the tongs, but let's, uh, let's see how this goes with the spoon. Okay, so I've got a nicely enrobed uh, tortilla with enchilada sauce, and then I'll add a few slices of cheese here. Now uh, I'm using slices of cheese because I don't have a cheese grater. I really do not like washing a cheese grater by hand. Uh, I didn't mind having a cheese grater when I had a dishwasher, but I just don't like 
dealing with a cheese grater without a dishwasher. So this is going to be how I'm going to do it this time. Okay, so a little bit more enchilada sauce on the top of that. And then I'll dunk the next tortilla. You can see how, how this goes here. I'll just keep doing this until I uh, have all of the tortillas stacked up with bits of cheese in between. That is the New Mexico style. Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, I know it irritates a lot of people when they see this method done, but this is such a quicker way of making enchiladas that I think it's a really good way to go. So now our final step is to just warm these through. Uh, in the past, I've always put this into an oven or just under a broiler for a few minutes to melt the cheese and to make sure it was all warmed through. But since I don't have that anymore, I'm going to have to go to my makeshift oven. Uh, this is how I make pizza uh, here on my cooktop. I'm just going to put the plates onto my uh, pan here. If I can do that, yep. And then I'm gonna cover this up with a bowl. And this method uh, works quite well. Uh, the, it traps some of the heat in inside uh, this contraption here and basically makes this an oven. This will probably take 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, this is kind of a slow process. Uh, I am gonna be quite hungry by the time this is done. So I do have some sauce that is left over and this I'll just put into a little container and use this for breakfast tomorrow. Uh, this goes really good with eggs. Uh, you can poach some eggs in this. Uh, maybe thin it out a little bit because it is a little bit thicker now. Uh, but I also need to just slice up some cabbage because I think cabbage goes really good with enchiladas. Well, here we go. My dinner is finally done. I decided to add a fried egg on top. Uh, normally, I like just the cheese enchilada. Uh, I'm pretty simple that way. And I don't ever eat chicken. And beef is okay occasionally. I just don't really care for beef enchiladas. I just like cheese enchiladas. But I decided to go with a fried egg today because I just need a little bit more protein. So. Hopefully the egg will take care of that. I didn't do a very good job of cooking the egg, but um, there it is. Uh, should be a little bit runny, which it is. I just uh, kind of overcooked it a little bit, uh, but uh, that will be really good, especially mixed with the sauce and also with this cabbage. But one of the things I really like with cabbage is to really have it finely shredded. So that's what I did. And I think it just makes a uh, much better texture uh, and flavor altogether. So I am going to enjoy my dinner. And one thing I know for sure now is that I will definitely be having enchiladas as a regular meal from now on. Uh, without them for too long, I will now add enchiladas to my weekly rotation of meals because I have missed them. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.